Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're going to try and resolve this entire algorithm using Dijkstra's algorithm. And I'm going to show you guys literally the quickest e and easiest way to complete this sort of problem. So let's have a look at the question and get started. Now, it says here that the diagram shows the time taken in minutes to drive along some sections of the road. So for this kind of problem, we always assume we'll start at a certain point. Most of the time you start at point A. And we're going to have to redraw this diagram according to Dijkstra's algorithm. For part A, it says use the algorithm to find the quickest route from A, so we'll just circle this point, all the way to point I. State the time required. Now I'm going to draw it on this right hand side here. Yeah? So first things first, to copy this out, we need to draw a box. And in this box, you're going to have three upper values. Yeah? The first point is where you put the original point A. And the square next to it is basically telling you which position this is. So this is always going to be position 1. Because there is how many layers? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Because there's 9 different vertices, it's going to go all the way up from 1 to 9, each of the letters. So each letter will be unique. The second value is the minimum time required, the minimum minutes taken. We're going to get to that in a second. And the bottom set of values is our working values, telling us exactly which values we've been using. What you're going to see. So let's go ahead and sketch all this from A to B. Yeah? So you've got A, you've got B value up here. And then you got C up here. Okay, and then you connect the lines. This goes here. And then of course number them we have 11, 16, 7, 14. It helps to count how many values you have. So we have all together 1, 2, 3, 4. Cool. So 17 on the left side, 17 on the right side. Cool. Now, now we're going to get started. So I'm going to quickly change the color of my pen. So I'm going to use a uh, black pen. Now the way this works, you start from point A and we're going to count the shortest route from each line. So we're going to start from and just follow the vectors. So in the beginning, at point A, we've traveled zero minutes. So zero is the default. So you always start with one and zero. Now if we have a look, if we go up the B road, we travel 11 minutes, so it'll be 11 here. If you travel across the D road, you travel 16 minutes, so it'll be 16 here. If you go across the AE route, you travel 8. So clearly AE is the shortest, but we want to make sure it is the shortest. Is there any way to make it shorter? Nope. So we say therefore this is our second position. We traveled 8 minutes. That's how it works. So these two are cleared. Next, let's have a look. Now if we traveled from E going upwards, it adds extra 5 minutes from E to D. 8 plus 5 is 13, so we put 13 here. So you can see now that 13 is the new shortest time. Okay, likewise, if we went from D to B, it'd be 13 plus 7, which is 20. But we don't need to write 20 because 11 is short, so we can ignore that. Okay, so, so far, this means, just looking at time, we've got 13 here. However, if we look at E, it would just do the rest of the boxes. If you go from E to F, it would be 8 plus 6, which is 14. If you go from E to H, it would be 8 plus 16, which is 24. Likewise, if you go from F to H, it's also 24. So we're going to keep on going until we are absolutely sure we know the minimum value of each one. B has 11, so the next shortest after 8 be 11. So this would be position 3 with 11. And this would be position 4 with 13 minutes. So that's how we do it. And I'm just going to highlight and show that it's done. So, so far we've completed quite a few routes. Let's have a look. Where else can we go? If we went from B to C, 11 plus 16 is 27. Looks quite big, the number. But if you went from D to C, 13 plus 9, that's just going to give us 22. So that's so far much shorter. If we went from F to C, because we had 14 earlier, F to C, that's going to be 14 plus 3, which is 17. So that's actually really short. So that looks to me like that's probably the shortest so far. But we should keep inspecting. This one requires you to carefully look non-stop. So I think so far that appears to be the smallest. If we went from, let's say, F to G, that's 14 plus 8. Or, let's get even smaller, 17 plus 4 is 21. Because 14 plus 8 is 22. If we went from G to H, 21 plus 2 is actually 23. So again, another smaller value. Now lastly, 
going from the last one, we can go from 23 to, so from H to I, 23 plus 7 is 30. That's way smaller than going from G to I, which is 21 plus 14, which is 35. So I think that wraps up. I think we've got the smallest values. So now we can go ahead and update all the boxes. Okay, so we said we've already labeled A, B, D, and E. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So next one would be 5. So the next most number was 17, isn't it? No, it was 14. So that means F would be position 5 with 14. Next would be position C because the next one is the 16, so the 6 one. Next one after C would be, let's see, we've got 21, so that's the 7th. And the H is the 8th because the smallest is 23. And finally is I, which is 9. And that's it, and then you put the associated values. So the minimum value we obtained in C was 17. And then for G we obtained 21. I, 30, and the minimum value of H was 23. And that's it, guys. That's literally how you produce your chart. This tells us exactly um, the shortest routes from each position. Now, answering the question, they want us to state the time required for the quickest route. So let's have a look. Let's find the quickest route first. So we said that the quickest route, because now we can actually check the maths. We start at A. So B, so for part A, we start at A. And then we went all the way from A to E. So let's label it. A to E. And then from E to F. Because 8 plus 6 was 14. And then from F to, let's have a look, C. Because plusing 3 will give us 17. So remember, these numbers occur from the minimum choice. And then from C to, what's this one, G. And finally, G to I. So that's what we're going to write down. So we're going to write this down as A to E, E to F, F to C, C to G, G to H, and then finally I. And I gave us the total length or time of 30 minutes. That's our shortest, quickest route. And that's how you do it, guys. Whereas for part B, it says now that roadworks cause a delay of 5 minutes on the section GH. So let's find section GH. So GH, GH, GH. Okay, here's GH. So here's a five minute delay. So now the two has increased by five. So now it's seven minutes. So because of that we can't we may not be able to rely on the same route. So to find a new quickest route, let's start again from the beginning at least. So if we tried to find a new quickest route, we can do A to E again. So we know A to E is definitely the, the right option to take. And then E to F. So currently we're at 14. We know we can't go up to G. Any route that leads to G we have to abandon it. So we can't go to C C leads to G and that messes up. And we can't go straight to I because if you add 14 minutes, it'll be a massive time. So we have to start from F and realize to get to I, we might have to go down this time. So we, so we do 14 plus 10, which is 24. 24 at 7 would be 31. So that'll be our final answer. So the shortest route for this one would be A to E, F to H, and then H to I. And this gives us a length of 31 minutes. That's it. Yeah. And that's it. This is the end of the question.